call this planning commission meeting on Tuesday, August 27th uh, to order. Uh, please rise. Please, 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 please. Please, God, yes. Dear Jesus, thank you for bringing us here together today, Lord. I pray that you will help us to um, think responsibly, Father, and to um, hopefully, Lord, hear all sides and do your will. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen
it is already being used for this and already has maintained uh, this building for four, over 40 years. Uh, is this an action of the property owner? Um, you know, this is, a, well, I guess it could be, whereas they don't want to rebuild the cantilevered portion to be structurally <coughs> stable to um, add the cedar shake back on. And so, and again, um, would this cause substantial detriment to the public good or impair the purposes? Um, I mean, it would be precedent setting if we were to allow this much. Um, it is 10% is the limit, and this is more closer to a 30 to 40% if they were to do this on the facade. So where 10% is the allowable accent, um, this would go well and above, and we would have more people seeking this alternative. So uh, staff recommendation is uh, denial, as they have not met the criteria for um, the variance. Okay, is there anyone in the audience here who would like to speak on this matter? Can I ask a question? You can. Um, is this not, because I know tractor supply doesn't own the building, um, but other tractor supplies, that's the facade that they use, and it's typically you know, more of a metal roof style. So is that not something that they're just trying to go off of what they do with other buildings, I guess. I get. I understand what you're saying with our ordinances, but I just didn't know. To me, that would look a lot better than what it looks up right now. So uh, I, it, it may uh, be something that they uh, use as what they're trademarking or or such. Um, they are not indicating that uh, that this has anything to do with their branding. Okay. Um, the alternative is only to be used because. Um, as the engineer had stated that it is not structurally stable enough to hold a cedar shake. Sir, please stand. State your name if you will please come up to the podium. Oh goodness. Uh, I don't have a dog in this side. My name's Jeff Hankey. Uh, but I can tell you it, a couple things. I think your definition of metal and aluminum is pretty narrow. I mean, modern buildings today with facing don't use shake shingles. Now, are they are they required to do shake shingles because that's what it already was? No, they are required to only be allowed to have ten percent metal accent. Okay, so so that could be metal or it could be something else. It doesn't have to be shake shingles. Is that correct? Correct. It just cannot be ten percent metal, and so where they want to do thirty to forty percent metal. Right. Well, a lot of the metals that are now today have uh, wood grain printed on them. There are shingles. I think it's a very we're going to have to look at you know what kind of thing that that they might. But the only other thing that I was going to mention is you said rebuild the cantilever of the building. Had to be a really, really big, huge expense to a place like that. And probably, I, 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 I don't know, if, you know, if they would stay there or not. But the nature of a cantilever is that the portion in the front is hooked to something cantilevering from the back. So that means that you'll be a little limited as what you can do to the front without affecting everything. Okay. Yes. That's all I would say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear that the applicant has actually showed up. So if you are uncomfortable not hearing from the applicant, you can continue this to our next meeting. Or uh, if you feel that the information provided to you is adequate to um, make a ruling, it is completely up to you. The committee would like to continue until the next meeting. Okay, hold on, let me get that date certain. Okay, so we would need a motion to continue to September 24th. All right, your motion. Um, second. No. Okay. Continue until September 24th. Right. <clears throat> you ready for item two? Ready for item two? All right. 
Excellent. This is a request for a special use permit uh, located off Zero Grandview Road. Um, it is a parcel that is landlocked between um, off of Grandview and Cove. You'll see in just a second. They are requesting a special use permit to allow an 11 unit cottage housing development in accordance with 94-59. So this is the lot right here. Uh, it is uh, just shy of 35 acres. Um, it does not have any public utilities on it. Um, it is uh, septic and well would have to be used in the area that it is being proposed. There is no front frontage on a public way. It is currently zoned R1, low density, single family residential, and it is vacant and heavily wooded. So here is your zoning map. So as you can see, uh, that big red area to the left is the RA, is a city-owned parcel, as well as the to the south, that R1 is also city's uh, city-owned uh, property, uh, and it is adjacent to county uh, zoned areas. So it is very rural out there, uh, with little to no uh, neighbors or development in that. Adjacent to it, uh, except for three or four homes. So, as part of the special use permit, we go back to our comprehensive plan and follow the uh, land use development, future land use development map. As you can see, the subject property is located in our rural residential designation for the comprehensive plan. So, <clears throat> the applicant is proposing uh, two clusters one five units and one six units. Um, and there, the, the use of the, this use is to be considered lower impact than if you were to develop a full subdivision to the extent um, applicable in this area. So here's the site plan. Um, that red line that you see is a uh, road that is proposed from Grandview that is going to the adjacent property, which is owned by the same uh, applicants here today and it will be accessed from that roadway so they are building off of Grandview um, they're uh, currently under review with the county for that development so the the way that the, uh, sorry, the cottage housing regulations stipulate you can have um, up to two clusters and uh, they are proposing one cluster of six units and one with five units. There are open space requirements. There are community buildings um, that are required as well. Uh, common areas and they are also, um, the, the cottage housing goes into how big they can be. Um, they can be no greater than 1,500 square feet. Um, the parcel or land area needed to do this is a minimum of 25,000 square feet. Um, they are to be one story. They are to have garages and patios. The, the cottage housing regulation is very specific on how this is to be developed. Um, the common area is to have um, units on either side of it, and it has to be accessed by um, all walkways, driveways, and roadways are to be paved as well. So staff recommendation, so there are a couple of things here. Um, we cannot provide water and sewer to this area, so it would have to be well and septic, which is not under the purview of the city to approve or deny. That would be in the Department of Health or Environmental Health for the county. Um, so uh, with this approval, it was an approval for two clusters, one with six units and one with five units. And uh, this does not supersede any other uh, zoning ordinance requirements. Vehicular access shall be provided via uh, the uh, roadway that is going to be built in Grand from Grandview Road, and there is no access off of Cove Road. Um, the only access is that super sharp corner, and we don't want to encourage anybody up there to turn in there. Um, we are also, we have no commitments, or we cannot, um, this rezoning or special use permit does not guarantee any providing of any sort of public utilities up there. And then all site plan review um, stipulations and regulations must be adhered to, as well as the existing ordinance. Okay. Is there anyone here representing 
development. Sir, would you like to say anything? Yeah, I'm fine. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Yes. All right, please come forward to the podium and say your name. Hi, my name is Carrie Sheldon. I have a question. I believe you misspoke when you said that it's not, there's no surrounding residential. I live in the, the neighborhood of 21 homes that this will disrupt with all the noise that will be happening on even developing it. There's also five homes on Grandview right after where they're wanting to put the driveway to go. So we're going to be looking at a lot of traffic issue right there. Um, my concern is when you say units and clusters, and what I've read just a little bit ago, which has surprised me, was that he's using the term family and slash church gathering places. So then you're going to be looking at noise ordinance. Because right now where we live, it's very peaceful and quiet. It's, it's actually wonderful. And this is why we moved here from California. We dealt with having to deal with wells, having to have a well in a community. And if the well fails, then you're dealing with a lot of upset people having to figure out and pull money together on how to pay for that. Sharing a well water system and even sewage is not a good idea. But my, I don't understand using family retreat and church, how that makes it acceptable reasoning. Because when you talk about having, have you ever been to a retreat, a church retreat? Have you ever been to a, I mean, a family retreat is one thing. I mean, even renting these things out, you're bringing in people that's not gonna really respect the property. They're not gonna respect the surrounding area. So I'm not understanding why that would even be acceptable. That's what I got to say. <laughs> Sir, do you have anything you want to say about your question? I don't, I don't know what the question was, to be honest. Why are you using the, the words family retreat and church groups that you would be renting these things out to, these cottages? <laughs> this is our second time doing this. We did that in Montana, and that is our intent, our families to use it, churches to use it, uh, retreat-like experiences. And isn't there going to, okay, isn't there going to be a better place that has an area that it's not going to disrupt residential? Not that I own. No, of course not that you <laughs> own, otherwise you would have done that. But to put it in an area and then stipulate, well, it's not close to a residential area, that's not true. Okay. Have you looked up the area? Have you gone up the street? Sweet Briar is two seconds. Yeah, so, so the positioning, if you can look, can you look at the whole property map? Yeah, because so, I was trying to yeah, see Yeah, so the positioning and what our intent is, it goes past your subdivision. Are you in the three, three acre lot subdivision on the right? Where's your home? On the left, we're on the same side of your building. So in other words, our first cul-de-sac in my residential area is going to hear oh, that wonderful building and disruption. Okay. So two different topics. If anyone's going to build on their property, it's a moment in time. It will cause construction noise, but that's going to happen on any project that goes on in this city. You have to build the home and then it quiets down. After I get the that. We built stuff. a yeah. house every five So years. everybody made noise when they built in your neighborhood and then it calms back down. So our intent is to move this property further up to the ridge. So your neighborhood is down low. This is further past you on the right. And so. the noise level, once you have built this, mm -hmm. with renting these cabins out, what kind of rooming is there going to be for noise and pollution? Property, respecting the property mm -hmm. and the neighborhoods around it. Yeah, I'm in the right. neighborhood. Thank you, ma'am. We have recognized your concern about the exactly. development. Do I have any, anyone else that would like to speak on this development? Yeah. Please come to the podium and state your name. And sir, for the record, what was your name? Grant Schmelk. Okay. Yeah, I'm Carol Holman. I live right around there, too. 
And from what I understand, and I tried to do some research on this, there's a lot of mines underneath that property. Is that not is that not correct? There's a lot of mine shafts around there. So how do you build on top of that? I'll speak to that when you're ready. And the water the water usage for that property is going to be strictly wells. There's going to be no other water because we have a water issue in this county. Yeah, the city isn't able to reach this property at this time. Okay. So, sir, can you answer the question about the mines? Yes. So we've met with the city. And well, we've had a survey for the mine shafts, and then we've been asked to move off of that mine shaft an additional 150 feet for this buffer. It's been surveyed with the city, so I don't know how no, to answer I, I your question. Think, We're not building over the mines, I guess, is the answer to your question. Well, I have the impression that they run pretty deep on that property. Yeah, we've got the map. Okay. And, and that's, a, that's an issue for later on. And for the residents that live in that area, you know, I realize that it's already zoned for this, but for a retreat, it's for actually something like zoned that, for, it's I, zoned I, I would for 30 be, houses. Okay. I would All be right. highly opposed to that right. for the same reason she's mentioned. Thank and you, ma'am, for sharing your concerns, and the commission will recognize that. Does anybody else want to speak on this matter? Yes, sir, please come forward. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Uh, if you could show the one with all the two little clusters, please. Um, have you talked to environmental health? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did they indicate that you were going to be able to have uh, 11 septic systems? Yeah, we're going to be working toward the community septic. And has one ever been approved? It has. In this county, in this state? Yes, sir. Really? Where's that? Uh, I don't know. I don't work for the EPD. Have, have you ever approved one? Or, or I mean, no, no, one to be approved? In in Jasper, no, I'm not aware Jasper, of it. There's Bates one in the city. Pickens County is the only one. Pickens County is doing one for the new RV setup. Um, and there's one in Jasper County. Um, there has been a couple. I'm from Augusta, so I know that there is two in Augusta. They're little pocket plants. Right. Well, you're not talking about a pocket plant, is that correct? I'm not familiar with what that is. Uh, that's it's just a, a large treatment. Center. It's a larger version of the. Yeah, we treatment. talked to the EPD and the Department of Health. And we've, we've started that process with them with our soils test, done a phase three study, and those have all indicated that it is possible. And so, uh, so you already had perk test done? Yes, sir. Um, none of that's going down into city water into the mine, I guess, so. No, that's why everything's been shifted over. 150 feet. We do own the property over the mines, but we are moving off of the direct access from above. And uh, the lines on this page, is that a topography, correct? Yes. So it seems to be very steep in that area. And yet you're going to be able to get in that many septic systems and that many wells. Uh, there would be two septic systems, sir. That would be a community septic. Thank you, sir. Do you have any other questions? Do I have anything else from the OA? All right, please, sir, please come up and the podium. State your name and... Uh, my name is Bill Miller. Uh, sir, I don't think I've ever met Grant before. Uh, nice to meet you. Welcome to Pickens County. Thank you. Uh, like Grant, uh, I don't live in the city of Jasper, but unlike Grant, I live in Pickens County. And I live in the area uh, around here, around this uh, this development, proposed development. And uh, I have a, some questions, particular questions about the uh, whether you should approve it, recommend uh, to the city council to approve uh, this uh, cottage housing development in this particular area. Could you go back to that, um, the larger, well, back, you, you went past, keep going, stop right there. If you look at, at this particular project, you can see the green there is all county area, it's all rural residential area. It's all developed uh, at low intensity developments. And this particular land is the only land uh, in that area that belongs to the city. As I understand, uh, there was more land that was annexed into the city uh, by uh, Gary Copeland many years ago. And then it got de-annexed, some of it got de-annexed out of the city not too long ago. 
But this particular land, the city declined to be annex because they wanted to control the area above the mines, which is the city's part of the city's water supply. But it's a unique area in that uh, it's quite a ways away from the rest of the city of Jasper. And it really doesn't have that uh, urban feel that the rest of the city of Jasper has. It's really more like the county. And so when you look at your, uh, your criteria, I think number three and number 10, which are the same the criteria for uh, approval of a special use permit, uh, you have to look at uh, whether it's going to be good for the city and, and uh, how it's going to affect the neighborhood. And I think that this is a unique uh, uh, piece of property and that a cottage housing development is not the appropriate place. Mm -hmm. This is not the appropriate place for a cottage housing development. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the idea that uh, if you developed it as R1, straight out R1, you might be able to get 30 houses on it, uh, one acre lots, 34 acres, uh, and that would be a lot. But you might have problems selling it because of the location of the mines. But as far as making it a cottage development, that's more like something that you would want in an urban area and not something that you would want out of the county. And it's going to be quite different than all of the other development that's in the county. And so I think you should consider you know, how it's going to affect that particular neighborhood and how different it's going to be, even though it's in the city. It's still really surrounded by the county stuff. And the county's going to develop it as rural residential. And if you look at the comprehensive plan, you can see that the comprehensive plan says that that whole green area is expected to be future development as rural residential. And we're constantly having to deal with uh, suburban uh, uh, rezoning to uh, suburban uh, real estate, uh, residential. Uh, in that area, but it looks like the county is going to hold the line and keep it as rural residential. But I, I just don't see how you can recommend to the commissioners that this um, cottage housing development would be appropriate for this area. Number one, she didn't really go into it in detail, but the, uh, the site plan, can you go to the site plan? Yeah, the site plan isn't consistent with the uh, a cottage uh, housing development ordinance that the city has right now. I mean, the cottage housing uh, development uh, ordinance says those uh, cottages have to be on both sides of the common area, uh, and it's not. Um, the, there's some other specifications, I think, that I didn't get into the details. She might be able to tell you the specifics of how this particular site plan is not consistent with the cottage uh, housing ordinance. In, in particular, if you want the details, I, I'm not an expert on, on the city's ordinance, but this site plan that they've submitted is not sufficiently uh, approved the way it is. And it seems unfair to uh, the citizens of the county to, for you to recommend to the city council that they approve this when we don't even know what the site plan is actually going to be. They can't, they cannot get, they cannot build it according to the site plan, is what it must. And why are we having a, a public hearing on something that we really don't know what it's going to be? Thank you, sir. No, I'm not finished. <laughs> if you don't mind. I'll give you about another minute, okay? Oh, well, okay. There's also, the, you know, the possibility, this is speculation, is that you could it's uh, you know, 11 units and, uh, and 34 acres. So that's pretty good, uh, pretty low density. But there's nothing in a special use permit that would keep you from uh, subdividing that property and taking another 15 acres off and coming back to the city at a later time and say, hey, let's put two more clusters in here. These first two clusters did real well. Let's put another one. That's mere speculation. Uh, Grant has not said that that's what they're going to do. But it'd be very hard for the city to deny that mm -hmm. uh, later on, and you could end up with uh, you know 33 units in there uh, over time. And it'd be hard for you to oppose that 
if you've already approved one uh, cluster code. And the other thing I wanted to point out that I don't think you guys talked about, if you look right here, this is a, a ravine. This is the, the high, high point. What's not shown here is that this ravine goes off to, uh, have you ever been down the, the cove and seen the waterfall back there where, where the masons have their uh, annual retreat or whatever? It looks like, and I can't, I can't say for sure that it does, but it sure looks like that goes right into that waterfall, which goes right into the water supply. So if you're going to put a, a package plant or a community septage treatment uh, facility up there, which are notorious for failing. They're usually used only as a temporary means until the city can get sewage to an uh, area. Because, I mean, think of it, you've got 11 units, 11 people, and they're gonna be rentals. So they're not gonna be people who are really concerned about what they put down the drain. So these package plants often uh, fail. Uh, they get upset. And then you've got a real problem because you've got 11 houses that continue to dump in. You have a regular septic system on one house. Those people are concerned about what goes into their septic system because they don't want it to fail. But when you've got a rental like this with uh, 11 units, uh, it's going to be a whole different ballgame, quite different from all the rest of the uh, development in that area. So I, I don't think you would want to recommend to the city council that you start approving uh, these package plants or community, I say, I think they call them community septage treatment facility. Mm -hmm. And particularly in this particular area where that ravine is going to go down uh, right into our water supply. It's not very far. Uh, that, uh, that waterfall is just out of the picture there. So good to meet you. Thank you, sir. Oh, one other thing was, uh, oh, these are, they're proposing 1,000 square foot cottages. Yes, sir. And uh, it's got to be 1,400 in an R1, or 15, I'm sorry. What is the uh, the square footage for? So um, this is a special use permit. Right. So some of the requirements for minimum size mm -hmm. do not apply. So those, the maximum is 1,500 for these units. Okay, and how about for a uh, R1? R1 is 1,400. Okay. But this is a special use permit. So this would allow 1,000 square foot. Uh, units, which is quite different than all the other development that you're going to see in that green area uh, in the town. And the fact that it's going to be uh, you know, non-owners. I think I saw somewhere in the ordinance that uh, there is an issue about the owners, the common areas have to be owned by the owners of the units. And I don't know how you do that with what's being proposed here with a church or family retreat which appears to be almost a commercial activity. It's doesn't, it doesn't fall under the, the commercial standards for the city zone. But if it's going to be a, a rental of 11 units for retreats or, mm -hmm. or family get-togethers, it's almost like a hotel. Yes. Even though you, you don't, it doesn't fit your requirements for a, a business. It's like Airbnb. But it just doesn't seem like you're gonna you're thinking about doing a special use permit. Special use. And the only time you would want to do a special use that is different than the regular zoning is when it's there's some benefit there. And it just looks like a cottage housing development in this particular area would not be appropriate. Uh, because of what the neighborhood is like, all the rest of that area. Thank you, sir. The commission is taking your concerns under advisement. Graham, I do have one question. Uh, once this is built, will the development be able to be seen from the main road? No. Will there be any kind of buffer to help with sound around this to prevent? Yeah, it's a very wooded area already. So your plans are that the woods would prevent the sound and there would not be a sight line from the road? Correct. Unfortunately, okay. Thank I'd you. also like to address, it was Mr. Miller. Yes. I'd also like to address the discussion of that doesn't meet this uh, special use cottage permit, but that was specifically built line by line and meeting the city's ordinances and requirements for cottage style housing by our engineers. Uh -huh. So it does, it does meet all the requirements. So she's the expert. So that is why your conditions of approval are not based on a concept plan. 
They are based on the number of units. So when he comes in to do a site plan, he will go through every one of those and make sure it follows the regulations. So that's why it's stated. So this is just to give you a visual of what it could look like. So yes, I did mention that uh, when I was discussing it that he did not have units on both sides of the common area. Um, also, an event center is not a, a, an allowed use, it has to be a community building. So there are certain aspects that do not coincide directly word for word, but when the site plan comes in, that's when we address all the regulations to the T's and the I's. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Have questions? I do. How many, uh, approximately uh, how many mines is there on this property? I have not counted them yet. There's three of them. Three total. Has yeah, there uh, been any type of study on the structural integrity of the mines? So when we start utilizing or clearing these lands, how the mine, how the mines are going to be affected? Is it this is going to be used as like the retreater family issues? You know, is there issue of, of collapsing or anything along those lines? Yeah. So the the mines are on the far left of mm -hmm. that. Not where. Yeah, that would, that would be great. That would be great. Now, we've got mine maps, but if you look at the property, those are even worse. Yeah, I don't know how to show you, but this section is mines. Mm -hmm. This section is where we're proposing. So we've met staff and we've shifted around away from the mines. We have completed several surveys uh, of this area to ensure that there are certain areas that can be developed. Um, I don't have the final decision on all of the how that went down. That was uh, not part of this this project here. Where the current survey shows the mine shaft stopping, mm -hmm. there's an additional 150 foot buffer in our site plan, and then the, the property is even further from that. Most of it's 300 feet away from the far closest mine shaft. And all we're voting on today is a special use permit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry, I'm lost. So, and, and just to touch, and I may not have touched on it, uh, so when we were looking at these things, we were looking at that they fit the regulations and that they, you know, it is the burden of providing the septic and the water is not on us. Whether he can't, gets out there and it doesn't perk, that's on him. So, um, and, and with the water, and, and so making sure that this meets the definition of our cottage housing, which is, you know, the number of units, the size of the units, um, how they're accessed in the common area is what the special use permit is for. So because it is, they can be smaller than the 1,400 feet, because they can be located on three quarters of an acre, not the standard layout. So. It's kind of, if you think of it as a conservation subdivision where you cluster all the houses together and then you have open space in front of them. That's the best thing I can think about describing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to make a motion? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that we'll approve as reported. Okay. I have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Do I hear no? No. Okay, as a sitting chairperson, I vote to recommend. So that would be two one. Uh, so we vote to recommend to the city commission um, with all items listed um, to recommend it to the city commission. Okay. Item three is part of the same pro um, project. They are requesting a variance to not pave access, entry, and um, walkways or anything. So, um, as we stated before, 34 acres, um, there is no frontage on a public way, R1. As part of any development within the city, you have to provide paved access to uh, to any residential, commercial, any sort of development, um, and that includes walkways and parking areas and so forth. So this variance request is to not um, have the gravel, <coughs> or to allow for gravel or other suitable services uh, for the driveway parking and access. Um, 
in our uh, in our code right now, uh, gravel is prohibited. So, and hence why we have this. Uh, the paving is the the variance request for the paving to go back to the gravel. So, as you all remember, we have the criteria that needs to be met. Anything um, extraordinary, exceptional conditions to this property. There is some soil shape size. Obviously, we have topographic challenges in this area. Um, whether this would be, um, you know, um, significant enough to prevent them from paving, um, I'm not sure. Uh, also, is this an unnecessary hardship? Um, considering all residential development within the city of Jasper has to do this, we don't find that that's this particular to this pro pro uh, project or that it is unnecessary. Um, because the conditions are peculiar to this, um, or are they peculiar? Um, you know, everything that we've seen in the development, um, especially these larger residential developments within the city, um, there are topographic challenges, there are soil challenges, but everybody is facing them the same way by providing the paved access. Uh, and would this be a detriment um, to the public good or impair the purpose of the zoning ordinances. Um, we feel that this is, would be setting a precedent to allow a residential development consisting of this number of units to not have access to a paved road. Um, also, one other consideration is that the access that is being provided from Grandview through the county parcel is required to be paved as well. So we are recommending denial of variance request to allow for um, services other than pavement. Okay, before we get into the discussion on this, please remember this is on this request only about the paving of the roads and the sidewalks. So does anybody have any concerns or comments they would like to make? Sure. Please remember this is only about the paving of the roads and the sidewalks. Sure. Uh, the issue here is that uh, uh, you've got uh, access to this uh, through another subdivision. And then you're going into uh, this new development that would be, if they get the variance, would be just gravel roads. If you all remember back uh, when Bentry was, was built, uh, and you remember Georgia Baptist uh, uh, retreat uh, back at Sharp Top? Uh, the uh, access to that was through the gated community of uh, Bentry. And that didn't last very long because eventually the uh, people in Bentry didn't like people coming through their gated community to get to uh, the, the Georgia Baptist uh, camp in the back. And so they ended up coming around to Windy Ridge and building a new road uh, called George Baptist uh, uh, Road along Sharp Top to get into it. And that was initially a gravel road. And if this is a successful uh, uh, development in here, then you're gonna have a lot of people moving in and out. The, the problem with, uh, with George Baptist and Bent Tree was that uh, yeah, it's camp, and so it's not people living there, using the, road, the same people using the road. It's new people coming in all the time, uh, going faster on gravel roads, uh, stirring up dust differently. The, the, the people using it is, is going to be a lot different than if they were people that were living on the road. Uh, so, sir, are you for or against them paving this road? Well, I'm against you guys yeah. giving them a variance from your normal regulations because I don't see that anybody benefits that the city benefits or the neighborhood benefits uh, from you granting a variance to not pay the road. Okay. So you are against the variance? Yes. Thank you, sir. And is anybody else in the audience would like to please step forward? I don't want to step forward. Please state your name. Carrie Sheldon again. 